gone. It's gonna be a little different. I'm trying to see what kind of angle we got here. All right. What's going on? Up that description box. What's going on? First of all, first of all, shout out to all of my nerdy, intellectual, socially awkward black folks for leaving these well-constructed comments in the comment section. I really appreciate you. Uh, I get a lot of questions, and this is kind of going to be a dive into some of that stuff. Um, I get a lot of questions talking about how do you come up with this analysis? I feel that we're going to have a recession in 2023. And I'm about to give you the criteria that um, I'm using to come up with that analysis. Now, last year, I correctly predicted that unemployment was going to go up. Now, unemployment did not just jump up. It went from 3.9% to 4%. Hence my video voodoo numbers. But if that trend continues, because the economy is slowing down, you know, I've heard a lot of people, stock markets going nuts. I've heard a lot of people say the economy may be slowing down. All right. And this is their analysis and this is their viewpoint based on the information that they have, right? As you guys know, I have a car rental business and a lot of this information has come from the car rental business because this business touches the lower social economic strata. And I started to see that my rentals consistently were late, consistently. Now, this is across the board. It wasn't just one person. It wasn't just two people. It wasn't just three people. It wasn't just four. I mean, one morning I woke up, I had 25, 28 cars rented. 22 were late. 22. So let's dive into why are the car rentals late? Because I started to talk to the drivers. I started to talk to people. And across the board, Uber was slowing down, Lyft was slowing down, DoorDash was slowing down, Instacart was slowing down. So Uber, Lyft are two different kind of things. There are people who like Lyft, there are people who like Uber. So it's kind of like two different markets. DoorDash, that's ordering of food. Instacart, that's ordering of groceries. And I remember one girl, she's like, you know, I was consistently making 5,000 a month doing Instacart, it's been cut in half. And this is something else too. Uh, there's a new restaurant that I found. It's called Snooze. It's pretty good. Uh, they got rid of their funky, bunky French toast, which I used to love. But during the period when the stimulus money was flowing, I literally would have to uh, set my. Uh, I would. They had a wait list, and I would get on the wait list before I left home, because the wait list was always an hour, an hour and a half, always. And I noticed that once the stimulus money started to evacuate the economy, I could literally just walk in. So the stimulus money really, really exaggerated a lot of marketplace sectors, really, really exaggerated. And with this exaggeration came a sense of false confidence because I, I'll say this and I'm gonna say it again. If I saw the type of videos that I put up about the car rental business, I wouldn't have gotten in the car rental business. And I've had a lot of people who said, man, appreciate you for being honest. We were getting ready to pull the trigger. We were getting ready to, to do this. And man, and I have a lot of people who were in hire car who suffered the same thing that I have. Because I got a group of people, it's like, it's the BMWs. And I'm gonna just say this again. A lot of people is like, well, I wouldn't have put those nice cars on hire car. Let me go ahead and correct your response. You can't, you know, 
this one guy left this response talking about he's got like six cars and they're all buckets and he wouldn't I'm like you you just admitted that you bought a whole bunch of cheap cars and the most you could get was five yet you somehow want to convince us that you would not put BMWs and Range Rovers and stuff on hire car because it's a matter of choice not force come on man come on but we're, we're starting to see now what I feel is going to happen and I might be wrong but I feel that February unemployment is going to go up again I feel in March unemployment is going to go up again I feel in April unemployment is going to go up again and I feel in May unemployment is going to go up again then we're going to enter into the summer which is historically slow and it's going to be really really slow this summer and then we're going to bounce around into the fall kids go back to school some markets will open back up and we will see unemployment rising month after month after month now with the fed now once the fed starts boosting interest rates you're going to see a bunch of folks who will qualify for funding loans and stuff every time they boost the rates up everyone that was on the borderline for being able to qualify they're going to fall off so this is going to create a serious issue for a lot of people who are trying to get funding who are trying to get loans they're, they're just not going to be able to do it so you're going to start to see a lot of businesses collapse and there's going to be now this, this will not be to be misconstrued with the pandemic collapse this will be to be interpreted as the collapse due to natural marketplace forces because once this money and once again i think they were trying to do some more stimulus but once this stimulus money is fully evacuated out the economy and i, I have a feeling that we're pretty much there then you're in a situation where you're dealing with true real and normal marketplace forces which really are not that good because i've been studying this like why is the rental car you know and i feel that the rental car business from a customer standpoint is going to explode i feel that there'll be more people than ever renting cars because they won't be able to afford them so i feel that from that standpoint the business could be interpreted as good, but once again, you're dealing with an economically fragile demographic as your customer base. And I'm here to tell you, I'm gonna tell you a story. This happened the other night. You know, we have a mail room and I, I, I was getting my room and I got a package and I didn't expect to get a package because normally I know what I have coming. So I get it upstairs and I look at it and I was like, huh, didn't have my name on it. And the apartment number was correct and the city and address was correct, but this top name, the name was not my name and the top street wasn't my street, right? But there was a phone number. So I called the phone number and uh, she answered and I said, hey, I think I got your wine. And we had a nice little conversation and I'm going somewhere with this, so stick with me. So we talk, and uh, I take the wine back downstairs, and she picks it up last night. And then I ask her this morning, and we've been chatting all day. And I was like, what do you do for a living? Because, you know, she told me some stuff that let me know that she didn't have a normal job. Because she's like, I may have to go to Indianapolis and do this. And I was like, okay. So she's a business owner. She's a business owner. She's married. And we've been chatting all day. And this is the thing that when you get true and real entrepreneurs who get together, it's always a good time because true, real entrepreneurs who've been through the gauntlet, who have established businesses, they're not judgmental assholes. And they would not leave the comments that some of my haters leave. They just wouldn't do it because they know better. They know that real business is different. And what we're going to see, and I bring that up because we're going to see a number of businesses born during the global reset. A lot of people are going to throw their hat into the business owner. And one of the things is, 
people about to get tested. People about to get tested because the global reset is in full effect. Um, murder, murder's gone up. Murder did not come down. Murder went up a little bit. Uh, I was talking to a police officer the other day and he said that from where he says he's been on the force 10 years, he's like, this is the worst that he's ever seen crime in 10 years. And he's been on the force 10 years. So murder's going up, crime's going up, petty crime's going up, domestic abuse is going up. So we have all of the signals, crime's going up, domestic abuse going up, suicide is going up, suicide is going up. So we have all of the birds and the canaries in the mind that things are not heading in the right direction. They're not heading in the right direction. So. I feel in 2023, we will be enrolling in a very persistent recession. I don't think this is going to be a two month recession. We're going to be in and we're going to be out. I have a feeling that this bad boy is going to hang around for a minute. I have a feeling it's going to hang around for a few years and it's going to reshape America. It's going to reshape how we look at ourselves because the pandemic has reshaped a lot of what we do, how we view ourselves, how we view work, how we work, the nature of work, it, it's changed a lot. So this recession is going to create more change. And then the people who are really, really at the bottom of the ladder, they got slapped off the ladder. They got slapped off the ladder. And it's going to get more and more persistent. It's going to be more and more challenging for the average person to exist. Not excel, not rise, not level up. It's gonna get very, very hard for the average person to exist. We already saw that with inflation. I was talking to someone the other day and she said between gas and food and rent, her bills have increased $1,200 per month. You cannot keep doing that to normal people with normal incomes and expect them to make it. You can't, you can't. Um, one of the things you will see Oh, that's interesting. I'm just, I'm being nosy. One of the things that you will see is depression. Depression and substance abuse is about to skyrocket. It's already gone up, it's already trended up, but it's about to skyrocket because you're gonna have so many average people on the borderline. <clears throat> Every time inflation goes up a little bit, Every time they cut their hours at work, they're just literally gonna get hit with bad news after bad news after bad news after bad news. And it's gonna force people to self-medicate. They're gonna, drug use is about to, drug use is about to explode. It's about to explode. Because um, I'll tell you an interesting little story. This chick I was dating, she used to smoke weed. You know, and I'm not, I really don't care. You know, to me, weed is not like cocaine or heroin, but we were, we were um, dating and I come to know that she had very, very high anxiety, really, really high anxiety. And um, we, we met, I went over to her place, very neat individual. And she was smoking weed and it got to the point where she had to smoke weed every day because of the things that was going on in her life because when i met her you know cute little girl long pretty curly little hair um we started fucking instantly and you know i noticed the first night that i stayed we cuddled, she was literally 
gripping me in her sleep. Gripping me in her, in her sleep because until a little later, I did not know how stressed out she was until, you know, when they were talking. And I noticed that, you know, cause she normally doesn't text when she's at work and she's texting in the middle of the day. I was like, are you off today? And then she's like, nope, I got fired. I was like, oh, that's terrible. And she said, yep, I'm at home right now. I got my feet up and I've smoked three blunts. So she was, she was smoking weed hard. And then come to find out that she has disciplinary issues and some other stuff because once again when i meet you and i date you i only know a small snapshot of who you are as a person and then um you know pussy was bomb <laughs> i ain't gonna lie wet 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 so even though she was unemployed and she was smoking weed every day i kept fucking her kept fucking her right so one evening i'm over there and she has smoked four joints and her stress level is so high her anxiety level is so high those weeds didn't even take the edge off and then i saw the personality that got her fired because she completely wigged out on me she nutted up she was screaming she was yelling oh yeah and by the way she was butt naked the whole time butt naked stomping her little feet and she was freaking out and i'm sitting here like okay i like this girl but i got a choice to make so how do i do this so she was like i said she was naked so i did what i would do in a situation like that i actually hugged her picked her up took her in the bedroom and fucked the shit out of her that calmed her down a little bit. And then um, the whole night she was up, she was just wilding out. And next morning I left and I hugged her and I gave her a kiss because I knew I would never see her again. I would never see her again. And now <clears throat> this was October because she didn't have a job. Her lease was gonna be up so they let her out her lease early, so she moved in with a girlfriend. Then her and the girlfriend were fighting. I'm going somewhere with this, so stick with me. I'm going somewhere with this. And the girlfriend and her were fighting. And then um, she got kicked out of the girlfriend's place. And then I get this call at 1.30 in the morning a boogers and snot call as I call them. She's crying, she's screaming. She's like, could you please help me? I have nowhere else to go. And I'm just sitting here like, I already know the characteristics. Cause you know, if you've been around here a long time, she had very much the characteristics of Bailey. If you've been around for a while, you know who Bailey is. And I was just like, I start lying my ass off. Oh, that is terrible. I am so sorry. But I am in LA. I'm in LA. I'm not in Atlanta. Even though I was laying in my bed. Because I knew. I knew that if she came over and sp spent the night, she wasn't going to leave. And I'm going to tell you why she wasn't going to leave. She, got, she had to leave her apartment. She got kicked out by her friend. And she knew that we had a really strong sexual chemistry. We had amazing sexual chemistry. And I knew that if she moved in with me, she wasn't leaving. She wasn't leaving. And I honestly, and I don't know if we even had this conversation. Next time I live with a chick, we will be engaged. And then we'll get married. Because I, I don't really like, you know, I'm not trying to live with a chick. I've had so many chicks try to move in with me and I'm like, no. And I, I like stop that because uh, I, I don't, I don't want to be living with nobody because uh, like I said, pussy was bomb, but I knew that's what that would turn into. That's what that would turn into. And this is where I'm going. That whole episode 
of what she went through, multiply that times millions of people. That was getting ready to happen. This is part of the global reset. What happened to her, like, um, I'll be honest, the other chick that I knew that was now homeless, we were fucking. <laughs> we were fucking. This is how I get this information. Because I know I don't hang with these people in my normal walk of life. This is not my crowd, right? This is just me hitting some. And um, she's actually mad at me right now because uh, she found some YouTube stuff and she went off and we haven't talked. Um, so I assume that she's homeless right now. I assume that she is um, in a bad situation. I assume that she is struggling. And this is something that I consistently saw with these women folk. This uh, great global reset is gonna hit women harder than it's gonna hit men. And it's gonna hit single mothers so hard. You will start to see a level of cooperation among the women folk that you have never seen before. This new breed of woman doesn't feel that she has to cooperate because she's empowered, she makes her own money, she got her own car, she got her own place, she got her own bag, and that's before the global reset hits. That's before she has to realize that she has no job. Like, like I said, this one chick, I, I got a number. If I called her today and say, hey, come over, she been over there, but see, like I said, I don't want to live with no chicks. I don't want to live with no chicks. So, um, one of the things that is going to blow the minds of average men is the level of cooperation that is going to come from these stubborn, obstinate, resistant, hard to deal with women. It's going to literally blow your mind because as the landscape changes as things get rougher as things get worse as things get more pessimistic they're going to freak out because i'm about to say something there are some women who are independent hard-working who do what they need to do hard-working beautiful well-adjusted women there's a group of women out there like that. And then there's the majority of women who have been taken care of, pampered, had their little hands held. Essentially, they could fall and someone was there to pick them up. Now, there's not gonna be anyone there to pick them up because it's gonna get that bad. And then the reality of, all right, I'm out here by myself in this world with no help. Once that reality starts dawning on these women, the, like I said, the cooperation level is gonna be stunning and it's coming. I feel that this is gonna hit really, really hard by December because at December, so many things are gonna melt down, so many things are gonna be rough. And right now, the women who were living in hotels, who were renting cars from me, they're already there. Uh, I didn't tell this story because I was like, this ain't gonna ever happen. I had this chick who got late behind the car, renting a car from me, and this chick was attractive. She was uh, yellow bone, high yellow as they call them, with blonde hair, beautiful cheeks, big pouty lips, and blue eyes. And I believe the blue eyes were her eyes. And we got she got behind and I was like, just bring the car back. And she was like, isn't there something we can work out? And I'm like, you just paid me my money. Next thing I know, I am getting butt naked ass and titty pictures sent to the work phone. I'm like, what the? And she's like, you can come hit this every night if you want to, daddy. 
I'm white. All right. Okay. Not for one moment, and this is how I know I'm a true entrepreneur to my little heart. Not for one moment did I even consider it. I didn't like, no, 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 no. So I had to cut the car off and I went and got it that night. And um, she was about five two. I would say C's or maybe D's. Titties were nice. Pussy was shaved. But I was like, I, ain't, I am not gonna do this. Cause see, as an entrepreneur, I know that's a slippery slope. Once you start doing stuff like that, next thing you know, half your business is gone. But she sent me butt ass naked pictures of herself and some other interesting pictures. She sent me like 30 pictures and I was sitting there like, oh my God, Becky, look at that butt. And I'm like, because I've changed. I've changed. Because uh, that's another reason that I got out the business. Because I, I didn't talk about that. I started to get propositioned quite a bit. And I was just sitting there like, I just want my money, man. I just want my money. Because um, the car rental business is not a business where I actually mix business with pleasure. I've actually, I've never done that with any of my businesses. I've never done that with any of my businesses. So that's something I have a lot of discipline because I've had some opportunities, opportunities. Oh my God. But once again, just like that chick sent me those butt ass neck pictures, let me know I could come hit that tonight. That night I could hit that right that is the level of cooperation that you're going to start to see from these women and it's going to blow your mind because see you as the average man you used to chasing and begging and dealing it's just going to blow you're like wait a minute what because it's going to be it's not going to be like a gradual thing it's going to be like boom because that's how the destruction that's how the meltdown it's gonna be boom. It's not gonna be like, well, you know, we're gonna go down a little bit here. Cause like what I start, what I suspect to see with unemployment, I expect to see unemployment by August to start to explode because we'll be moving toward fourth quarter and a lot of companies, cause here, here's the thing right now, we have all of these supply chain issues and we still, once again, we still have all these ships off the coast of California with all this inventory. So at some point, we're gonna have a surplus of inventory. And what's that's gonna do? It's gonna bring down the price. And that's gonna bring down the price where some people had to invest money to get that inventory. It's gonna bring down the price to a point where they're gonna lose money. And that's when the fuckery is going to begin. When all these companies start losing money, like me in the car rental business, um, I've got a way to reduce my expenditures because between um, the insurance money and the tax savings, I should come out ahead about 120, 130,000. So I'm not going to lose money on the car rental business However, I still consider that an L because we as entrepreneurs, we don't get in businesses just to tread water. That's all I was doing in that business. I was just treading water. I wasn't, I, the business was generating revenue, but the revenue was going back into the business. I was just treading water. I wasn't making money. Like right now, I got one car rented out. I'm actually making money in the car rental business. I'm actually making money now. This one car I bring in about 1500 per month. You wanna know why? Because the majority of my cars are not rented out, so I don't have people tearing up my cars. I mean, when I got to the point where uh, I brought most of them in, and my stress level went down like a thousand percent, 
my issues and all, they just literally stopped. They just literally stopped. So I'm here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. Wait a minute. Let me do that again. So that's three. Because I got one wrecked car here that uh, they should be picking up. But this is what I'm selling. So I got three over there. And this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. I got 17 cars left. 17, because I actually I sold a Porsche last week. But, so I've got to go through the dog and pony show 17 more times to get these bad boys sold. But yeah, like right now, let me tell you guys something. Right now, I can put an ad on Craigslist. I'm, I'm not kidding, I'm not kidding. I can put an ad on Craigslist and say, hey, I need me a sugar baby and what you get in return for payment is this car. You know I would have women answering that ad so damn quick. So quick. Wait a minute. Now, what did I just tell you? I was dealing with someone who was literally willing to hop on the, the penis, hop on the penis so she can keep that car. I know what it's like out here. You know, being in the car rental business has exposed me to a lot of things that I wasn't exposed to. So now I know. All right, so bear with me for a minute. All righty. We're doing a test with this GoPro with the sunroof open. Let's see just how bad that is. I just want to know before I actually do some stuff, what's going to happen whenever I do it. So, like I said, this is one of the great... Um, fallout of the global reset you will see a very high level of cooperation among the women folk you will see a very high level of cooperation amongst the hobo sexuals hobo sexuals are in full effect they will be at your house they will be eating your video video vittles they'll be eating your vittles they will be on you and for the women, that hood penis is gonna be pouting. You gonna feel like someone that just knocked you into another life. You like, oh my God, I've never been fucked like that before. That hood penis, it's potent, it's potent. And that, that hood coochie, it's potent. I mean, I've gotten caught up a few times myself. So you're gonna see a lot of cooperation and you're going to see a lot of dysfunction you're going to see a lot of dysfunction because like right now i live by myself if i didn't want to live by myself i can easily have a roommate easily easily and many of you will be besieged with similar opportunities and offerings you will have your, your choice, you know, because one, one of the things is, one of the things that ex, exposed to me, and I may come off as an elitist motherfucker, but I don't like needy people. I just don't like needy people. And this is a nut, this is, there's, there's a ton of reasons why I'm getting out the car rental business. But the people who rent cars are needy people. 
So I need a tire. I need this. I need keys. And I need. I need. I need just, it's just so un, distasteful. It's so unsavory to me to be around a whole bunch of people who are consistently needing something that's not family. You know, it's not like these folks are children. You know, if you got a child and the child's like, hey, I need my diaper changed, that's to be expected. That's normal. These are grown ass, needy ass babies. It's very, very disgusting. Very, very disgusting. But yeah, that's what I feel is going to happen. We're going to have a recession 2023. It's going to be a persistent one. It's not going to be a quick, you know, like this is so funny because when we were during this pandemic and things were going bad, there was a lot of people who were saying we were going to have a U-shaped recovery. It was going to be, um, it was going to be very quick. It's going to be kind of painless. And that didn't happen. That didn't happen. So, I could be wrong, but I don't think I'm wrong. This is one of the reasons that I have kept my debt levels to almost nil. You know, I have very little debt. I think my debt represents maybe, maybe 2%. If that, it might be 1% of my net worth. I mean, I got a government loan that I am in no hurry to pay off because the interest is super cheap. And um, this car loan, that's it. That's all I got. And I'm not trying to add more debt without a valid roadmap. Because if I was going to go out, and let's say I was going to go out and borrow a million bucks, I would have to have a roadmap where I can get that million bucks plus more money. It's going to have to be well defined, it's going to have to be proven before I would even do that to myself. Because, uh, or, you know, better yet, invest in me, like the car rental business. I am not investing $2 million in the car rental business. Just not doing it. Because you know why? I want to take money from a business that took me $2,500 to start to invest in a business that will not make me the kind of money that the business that I invested $2,500 in to start would not make me that kind of money wouldn't make it, would not take me to where I want to be. So one of the things that you have got to understand, and we're going to like, uh, I'm probably going to push off the training to the 1st of March because I haven't had the time to devote to it that I wanted to devote to it and spell it out. So I'll be talking about it, but it's probably going to be the 1st of March before I really get into it. We will see, and I'll start ramping up. But that's all I got for you guys. I will see you in the next one, and we're gonna see what this GoPro does, and we'll see if a new GoPro is better than a five or six year old GoPro. I think those GoPros were like, I think I seriously bought them in 2015, 2016. I'm almost sure of it. So we will see if this makes a difference.